world, and welcome back to DxO. My name is Don. Thanks for coming along. Um, so I wanted to do a quick video today about. Um, so the, my last one was about uh, applying Fuji camera profiles, and on that video I had a question about can you apply a Fuji camera profile and one of the film color profiles um, at the same time. And my initial response was actually, I was going to type up, nope, I don't think so. I think it has to be an either or thing. Um, but then uh, it, it took, I, I wasn't able to respond straight away and it was kind of percolating in the back of my mind. Um, and I had an idea. And this idea is a little bit tied to another idea that I had recently. Um, and that other idea that I had recently was about, is it possible to do a uh, open as a smart object into Photoshop from DxO Photo Lab. Um, and this all started because I saw that they had put out a new version of, um, oh, what do they call it? I don't know. Their, their, their raw conversion. I've forgotten what they've called it now. Um, that little um, sort of plug-in that lets you run, you know, if you're using Lightroom, you can run your files and, and get the benefits of the DxO um, engine. Um, so anyway, the, I saw an ad for that, and that was just kind of in the back of my mind. And um, one of the things that I knew about that was that it allows you to um, perform these adjustments and save it out as a DNG file. Um, and the DNG file maintains the things that you've done in DxO, um, but it also stays as a raw file so that you can go on to then further manipulate that raw file. So all of this is, is floating around in my head a little bit. So um, just coming to the screen, I've just grabbed an image here. I, I grabbed something different just so that we weren't um, staring at the, this isn't this isn't actually a photo of the day. This is from um, sometime in 2021. Uh, I, I snapped this one, so I grabbed this. Um, and it's it's got a few little, few little tweaks that's that's it was pretty heavy um, the Sun was just coming up pretty heavy shadows there so let's lift it up a little bit so anyway here we have an image um, and let's say that I wanted to take this uh, across to um, Photoshop so this is the first bit that I was talking about I thought can I open this as a smart object in Photoshop so I thought to myself okay self if I do this if I go to uh, over here to export um, to application and in those settings, if I, this way now, I've got something else up there. If I've got Adobe Photoshop selected and I do action export as, um, and I've got export as a DNG, all corrections applied. And actually I should come out of this for a second because, um, you know, part of this, part of this conversation is about, you know, being able to see the difference. And so, um, let me, let me come back here and, um, just before I send this across to Photoshop, let me go to my color rendering um, and let me grab camera body and let me grab uh, that basic Fuji um, profile there, which is giving me quite low contrast. We should be able to tell it apart really easily. Uh, the saturation and contrast have both dropped quite a bit in this image right here. So I, that's, that's fine. So I've done that, coming straight from the NEF file, export to application, Photoshop export as a DNG with all corrections applied. And this has done um, lens adjustments as well, um, using a 18 to Nikon 18 to 35, 3.5 to 4.5, f3.5 to 4.5, um, which does have a bit of distortion in it. So that's been corrected, you know, all the things that, that DxO does. Um, so that's fine. Do nothing else here um, and click export. And so my, my notion on this was that you export a DNG, when Photoshop goes to open it, it's gonna recognize it as a raw file, it's gonna to want to open it in Adobe Camera Raw, which is fine. So, but if I don't do anything to it there, if I just open it, I've essentially got my DxO file as a raw file handed over to um, Photoshop. So just be a moment here while my Photoshop launches, no doubt. Could have launched that in the background. Wasn't thinking that far ahead. That's all right. Um, so, so yeah. So I, I'm actually really interested. While well, while this is coming up, let me just say, if I'm interested, has anybody been doing this? Has anybody got? I, I've I've had this notion and I've played with it to see that it works um, to a degree. Um, but I, I don't have experience, so I'm curious if anybody's been actually doing this 
how does it go? You know, like are there are there sort of drawbacks or limitations? Uh, one obvious limitation is that if you reopen your smart object and you want to edit your raw data, you'll be editing it in Adobe Camera Raw. There's no way to get all the way back to DxO. Um, but you know, if you've given it a good base, then you can still. It might have some benefits over exporting it as a TIFF because you'll be able to get maybe at more shadow detail. You know, there'll be more detail involved. Um, so here we go. It has come up uh, Adobe Camera Raw, and you can see here it's the it's definitely you can tell quickly it's it's the lower contrast, lower saturation. Um, this is using the um, Fuji camera profile that I've applied. So I'm just going to come down here to my open space and I'm just going to do open as an object. And there we go. There we have it. So um, go ahead and close this. So you do whatever it is you want to do with it. And of course, just like any other um, smart object like this, I can, I can double click on it and it'll bring me back here. Um, you know, and again, I can, whatever I can manipulate that data, I can take those shadows to the, uh, <laughs> to the ends of the earth there. You know, it's got, it's got the full data. So that's whatever, whatever you're going to do with it, you can fully manipulate it, which I, I think this is a really cool idea. Um, and you've already got your color and your lens profiles and everything out of DxO. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so this was part of my, uh, thought process. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and close this because I'm, I'm going to, move on now. So that's, that's part one, uh, opening um, a DxO file as a smart object, keeping your raw data as you move over to Photoshop. Again, if you're doing that, I'd love to you know hit up in the comments uh, about how that's going and if, if you've run out of, into any stumbling blocks or any limitations other than the fact that you need to use Adobe Camera Raw after that. Um, so that's part one. So that's my thought process ticking along uh, and I will just do don't save here. Now, so the question was, if you've applied a camera profile here, can you then, in some way, get in here and, you know, and, and go to digital films and, and apply a Fuji Astia Soft um, in, in the same space? So I got thinking about this DNG and, and the fact that the DNG seemed to be baking in the corrections. And what would that mean? with the DNG file and would I be able to you know, see, see a difference there. So, so here's, here's where I went. Let me go camera body, put this back where it was, put it on Fujifilm. Boom. And again, just for comparison, this is, this is what the um, standard profile for the D750 looked like. And what's going on there? Oh, <laughs> I'm with it now. I was like, what is going on? Okay, so of course I made the DNG when I went to Photoshop. Um, so that is that DNG file um, already made. Cool, so we can just stick with that perhaps. Um, and so I threw myself off there. I wasn't expecting that second file. I was like, oh, I must've done a virtual copy. Hmm. Um, so anyway, all that aside. Uh, so let, let me actually just start over. So let me get rid of this one. Uh, remove that file. Boom. Remove. Um, and then if I do my virtual copy down here, and I just reset this just so we could have a comparison, because I want to be able to show these side by side. Um, D750. Uh, so you know, there's the difference. The more saturation, the um, more contrast coming through, and, and probably a little shift of colors there as well, although it's not quite as noticeable on this one um, in particular. So I come to this one, which has um, the Fuji color profile, and I go uh, not exp export to application, but export to disk. Um, and I've got a choice here, DNG, with all corrections applied. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It'll just export a fresh one. Cool. 11 seconds. It's a little slow. For the record, I have um, a couple of extra programs. I was recording some audio earlier today and I've got uh, 
I've got a couple of extra programs um, open in the background. I didn't want to risk losing anything, so I just left them there, slowing things down. Um, so, okay, anyway, DNG file, there it is, boom. Uh, and now, but when I come to it, so I've got here, it says Fujifilm and camera body and Fujifilm, blah, blah, blah. Um, and if I come to this one, it's, it's switched over to say generic rendering and camera default rendering. Um, so it, you know, it, it's kind of suggesting to me that that's been baked in to a degree, you know, that, that it's recognizing that now as the Fuji, um, as it's looking at that. So, so then I wondered, um, you know, can I apply a digital film to this? So I come here and I apply Fuji Astia soft. So that goes on. So, but how do we know that that's any different um, because of that first profile? And that's why I wanted to make the second one to have the D750. Um, so if I come here, there we go. Um, and now if I change this one to just straight up, you know, starting with the D750 and I go to um, Fuji Astia soft, And then I compare these two. There's an obvious difference in how it's rendering. So it's obviously started at a different place when it's then applied the um, digital film profile. Yeah. What exactly it's doing in the background, I don't know. Uh, will I or you or anyone else like the colors that result from double stacking these? I'm not sure. This is new and fresh. Like I said, it's just in response to a question that I had yesterday and thinking about what might be possible in the software. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for is it is it actually useful? Um, so yeah, there we go. We got DNG showing like that. Again, the Nikon file with Fuji Astia Soft. Um, showing like that obviously some sort of difference there so can you stack them yes you can um and you know but another just thinking about this in terms of stacking a couple of extra options that come to mind um would be to uh you know like if you come here to this is the one that's got the fuji rendering on it um and if you happen to have nick collection then of course you can pop into um, color effects, which has a number of um, a number of sort of film profiles built into it as well. So that might be another way. Um, in this case, you're you're taking it out to a TIFF file, so might be might be something to that. But let's see, what have we got? I think oh yeah, that's a good old blast of Velvia, which is crazy saturated um oh, i'm just trying to think superior astia so this is this is how um this is how nick collection wants to render astia so it's it's actually hitting it up um a little bit differently than than the dxo profile that that you get at this the other way um, but that's there as an option so I'll go ahead and press save. Another thing that uh, crossed my mind um, in terms of double applying profiles was, you know, if you've, I mean, in order to get at these profiles, you would have to have um, film pack installed. So I thought to myself, oh, could you hand it across to film pack? Interestingly, when I tested that last night, and I can test it again now uh, just because it's, um, you know, I, I only tried it the once and, and it could have been a fluke. Um, it, film pack on its own, although it, to my understanding, normally I, I don't use it standalone much, but to my understanding, it's supposed to handle raw files. Um, but it does not like these DNGs that DxO is making, I think. Let's have a peek. Um, export to application. Uh, and I think I've got that still here. Uh, DxO film pack is there. Yep, and I've got export as DNG. All corrections applied. So um, let's try that. It 
Again, my apologies, this might take a minute to pop up. Let's see, here's the message I got. This file cannot be opened by DxO Film Pack. So interestingly, there seems to be some compatibility issue there. Um, but you could you could equally um, just hand Film Pack, you know, if you don't mind handing it a TIFF, um, just export as a TIFF and, and hand it across to Film Pack and, and play with it in there. So essentially you'd be able to um, double stack that way as well. But I mean, you can, What's right? What's wrong? Who knows? It's, I guess it's just finding something that you like the look of, isn't it? So, um, I I don't know. You, the thing that that has me the most uncertain at this point is that you know these film simulations are a remapping of colors um, to look a certain way, but uh, you know to to simulate the film, but but. It, if that's right, why is there such a difference between the D750 starting file um, and when you when you get it round to or no this one here when you get it round to um, you know what why is that if if it's remapping to simulate a film hmm, I'd be real curious I don't I would never presume that anybody from DxO will watch this at any point um, but if by some fluke somebody does I'd love to know you know what's going on in the background in terms of how that's remapping to create that difference um, you know I guess ultimately it's just about playing around and finding um, the colors that you enjoy and the contrast that you enjoy uh, and going with that but Hmm. Here's another thing that we can possibly use um, when using film pack. So, so yeah. Apologies. This is probably a bit chaotic. Um, it was sort of a, a last minute thought to put this together as a video. Um, hopefully, you've been able to follow through. I mean, the ultimate thing here is, is I guess it's about using this ability to write a DNG file that has the corrections applied to it, um, and using that in different ways. You know, potentially as sending it to Photoshop as a smart object, um, or potentially as bringing it straight back into Photolab and applying a different color rendering on top, if you find some benefit in doing that. So, really, especially for this one, I'd love to hear some comments. I'd love to know what you guys think of this. Is it something that might be useful um, that, I don't know, that just isn't even worth it, that uh, is too unpredictable? I, I, it's something I'll be playing with. Um, but I, I don't know where that will end. So that's all for today. Thanks very much for tuning in and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.